Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. Shop 30 to 50% off Movement's innovative California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories with fast free shipping and returns now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com. Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's Movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. From their innovative ceramic materials to sexy automatic divers, from ultra-thin dress watches to solar-powered statement pieces and everything in between, Movement is making sure you're the good gifter this year for your family, your friends, or for yourself. And now you can take advantage of 30 to 50% off Movement's California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories to get them a gift they'll never forget. With fast free shipping and returns and amazing bang for your buck, Movement makes for a relaxed shopping experience. And with one-size-fits-all watches, it's an easy, elegant gifting experience too. Shop 30 to 50% off now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com. This is Space Time Series 25, Episode 99, for broadcast on the 21st of September, 2022. Coming up on Space Time... The Dream Chaser space plane being looked at as a possible rapid response military transport. The Ariane 6 begins launch pad testing as it counts down to its maiden flight. And Rocket Lab begins preparations for turning its highly successful Electron into a reusable launch vehicle. All that and more coming up on Space Time. Welcome to Space Time with Stuart Gary. Sierra Nevada's Dream Chaser space plane will now begin flying cargo to the International Space Station for NASA in February next year instead of this year as originally planned. The delays have been put down to ongoing development issues and the COVID pandemic. But the news of the latest in a long string of delays for Dream Chaser comes as the United States Department of Defense announces plans to examine using Dream Chaser to provide a three-hour point-to-point logistical transport capability to any place on the planet. This would allow the United States to deploy troops and equipment anywhere, anytime. Dream Chaser is designed to launch vertically into low Earth orbit aboard a Vulcan or Ariane 6 rocket. It then lands horizontally on a conventional runway, needing no more room than a Boeing 737. Although current development is focusing on transporting up to five tonnes of cargo per flight for NASA, Dream Chaser was originally developed to transport up to seven people on crew transfer missions to the International Space Station. In its current guise, each Dream Chaser spacecraft will include a 10-metre-long wing space plane as well as a 5-metre-long pressurised cargo module called Shooting Star, which will be attached behind the space plane, carrying an additional 4.5 tonnes of supplies. Although very futuristic in appearance, the Dream Chaser lifting body design actually goes back well over 60 years, with its origin in the United States Air Force 1957 X-20 Dinosaur spacecraft, which would have been launched on top of a modified Titan III rocket. NASA continued its development in the 1960s and early 70s, with a range of experimental spacecraft including the Northrop M2, the Martin X-23 Prime, the Martin Marietta X-24 and the Northrop HL-10. Then during the 1990s, NASA used the same basic design to develop the HL-20 experimental space plane, which eventually evolved into the X-38 Emergency Crew Return Vehicle, which would have been an emergency escape pod transported to the International Space Station in the payload bay of the Space Shuttle. It then would have remained permanently docked to the orbiting outpost until needed. However, the project was cancelled in 2002 following budget cuts. Meanwhile, the Pentagon is looking at using the Shooting Star cargo module as the basis for an autonomous unmanned military space station for research and development, training and operational missions in low Earth orbit. Sierra Nevada says it will redesign the module to include guidance, navigation and control systems for sustained free flight operations. 
It'll host specialized payloads, undertake experimental testing, manufacturing and assembly in microgravity, and carry a range of logistics. Longer-term plans could include higher elliptical and geosynchronous Earth orbits, as well as more distant lunar orbits. This is Space Time. Still to come, Ariane 6 undertakes launch pad testing, and Rocket Lab begins preparations for turning its highly successful electron launch vehicle into a reusable rocket. All that and more still to come on Space Time. Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. Shop 30 to 50% off movement's innovative California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories with fast free shipping and returns now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com. Development and testing of the European Space Agency's new Ariane 6 launch vehicle is now underway at the Kourou spaceport in French Guiana. A test model of the 63-metre-tall launch vehicle's central core has now been assembled for the first time. Ariane 6 is the first Ariane rocket to be assembled horizontally, which is simpler and less costly than the more traditional vertical assembly. After assembly, the rockets moved to the launch pad and then placed upright in the massive mobile gantry in order to validate the compatibility between all the components of the complete launch system. Ariane 6 is designed with two core stages, both powered by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen engines. The first stage has an improved version of the current Vulcan engine used on the Ariane 5, while the second stage has a newly designed Vinci engine. But most of the initial launch thrust isn't provided by the liquid-fueled engines, but by massive solid rocket boosters attached to the first stage. Either two or four of these massive P120 SRBs will be attached to the core first stage, creating the Ariane 6 2 and 6 4 variants of the launch vehicle. These are the same solid rocket boosters which act as the core stage of the new Vega C launch vehicle. Soon, more testing will be done on Ariane 6's upper stage at a purpose built DLR facility in Germany. Once in service next year, Ariane 6 will be capable of launching similar payload masses to the current Ariane 5, but at lower cost and more frequently. The heavy lift ECA version of the current Ariane 5 can haul 10,865 kilograms into geosynchronous transfer orbit and 20,000 kilograms into low Earth orbit. By comparison, the Ariane 6 2 will launch 4,500 kilograms into geosynchronous transfer orbit and 10,350 kilograms into low Earth orbit, while the heavy lift Ariane 6 4 version will carry 11,500 kilograms into geosynchronous transfer orbit and 21,500 kilograms into low Earth orbit. This report from ESA TV. Exciting times for the European space industry as the combined tests for the Ariane 6 launcher have begun. The objective of these tests is to verify and validate the compatibility between Ariane 6 and its dedicated launch pad at Europe's spaceport in French Guiana. It's an essential dress rehearsal to prepare and train the teams before the rocket's inaugural flight. An industrial and human adventure with thousands of people spread across many European companies and institutions working together. The Ariane 6 program is managed and funded by the European Space Agency, ESA, with Ariane Group being responsible for the design and development of the launcher itself. The French Space Agency, CNES, took responsibility for the construction of the new Ariane 6 launch base at Europe's spaceport, and Ariane Space will be the launch service provider for Ariane 6. With the combined tests at Europe's spaceport, a number of milestones have been achieved over the course of the summer. In the new launcher assembly building, teams from Ariane Group, CNES and ESA completed an important step of the process, the horizontal mechanical and electrical assembly of Ariane 6's central core. A few weeks later, the rendezvous. For the first time since its conception, Ariane 6 was able to meet its launch pad. The doors of the launcher assembly building opened to let Ariane 6's central core through. 
It took about 20 minutes at three kilometers per hour for the launcher to cover the 800 meters separating the assembly building from the launch pad. The rocket was then lifted from its horizontal assembly position to its vertical position. Ariane 6 is the first launcher in the Ariane series to be assembled horizontally. It makes it easier for the technicians and helps save time and money on every launch. Another element contributing to the competitiveness of Ariane 6 is its P120C solid rocket boosters. The P120C solid propellant motor is also used by Europe's other new launcher, Vega C. Sharing this key component means cost savings for both rockets. The P120C demonstrated its performance on the 13th of July with the successful inaugural flight of Vega C. But it's not only in French Guiana that testing of Ariane 6 continues. In the purpose-built test facility in Lampolshausen, Germany, crucial firing tests of the upper stage engine will soon begin. Then the upper stage will undergo further testing at ESA's STEC Technology Center in the Netherlands. Now only a few steps remain before the teams at Europe's spaceport can switch from the test models they're using for the combined tests to the flight hardware that will be used for the inaugural flight of Ariane 6. A first, which will be followed by many launches, continuing Europe's heritage of independent access to space. This is space time. Still to come, Rocket Lab begins preparations designed to turn its highly successful electron launch vehicle into a reusable rocket. And later in the science report, the Lancet Commission says an estimated 17.9 million people have now died from COVID-19. All that and more still to come on Space Time. The European Space Agency has witnessed one of the final launches of its Ariane 5 workhorse rocket carrying a new telecommunications satellite into geostationary orbit. The launch from the European Space Agency's Kourou spaceport in French Guiana carried the Utilsat Connect VHTS telecommunications satellite. Built by Thales Alenia Space, the 6.62-ton satellite uses the world's most powerful digital processor and will provide high-speed internet access across Europe. The 8.9-metre spacecraft is equipped with new antenna deployment and positioning mechanisms within the antenna tracking system. It also features new generation batteries and innovative new structural panels. Ariane Space Flight VA-528 was the 114th and 4th last launch of the Ariane 5 rocket, which has had a 96% success rate. Only three launches are left, one in December and two next year. The last being the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer or JUICE mission, which is bound for the Jovian system and is slated to launch on April 5th. Rocket Lab has successfully test-fired a used but refurbished Electron Rutherford core stage engine for the first time. The test was a significant step in the company's efforts to turn the Electron into a fully reusable launch system. The full-duration, full-thrust test fire involved an engine that had previously flown on the There and Back Again mission, which launched back on May the 2nd this year. That flight was the first time Rocket Lab attempted a mid-air capture of an Electron first stage. The Electron deployed parachutes to slow its descent from space before a helicopter plucked the rocket from the sky as it approached the Earth's surface. However, high winds saw the Electron stage ultimately released for a soft ocean splashdown by the chopper pilot. It was later recovered by a Rocket Lab vessel and returned for detailed examination and ultimately refurbishment. The refurbished engine has passed all the same rigorous acceptance tests which Rocket Lab performs on its new engines. This is Space Time. Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. From their innovative ceramic materials to sexy automatic divers, 
from ultra-thin dress watches to solar-powered statement pieces and everything in between. Movement is making sure you're the good gifter this year for your family, your friends, or for yourself. And now you can take advantage of 30 to 50% off Movement's California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories to get them a gift they'll never forget. With fast free shipping and returns and amazing bang for your buck, Movement makes for a relaxed shopping experience. And with one-size-fits-all watches, it's an easy, elegant gifting experience too. Shop 30 to 50% off now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com. The holidays start here at Baker's with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. You could do a classic herb roasted turkey or spice it up and make turkey tacos. Serve up a go-to shrimp cocktail or use Simple Truth wild-caught shrimp for your first Cajun risotto. Make creamy mac and cheese or a spinach artichoke fondue from our selection of Murray's cheese. No matter how you shop, Baker's has all the freshest ingredients to embrace all your holiday traditions. Baker's, fresh for everyone. And time now to take another brief look at some of the other stories making news in science this week with a science report. The Lancet Commission, a panel of world-leading experts in policy and disease management, says an estimated 17.9 million people have died from COVID-19 around the world, and this could have been prevented by better pandemic responses. The Commission says a lack of preparation, fast action, transparency and international cooperation has all contributed to the death toll, which is believed to be nearly three times the official count of 6.9 million since the first case was detected near China's Wuhan Institute of Virology back in September 2019. Reporting in the Lancet Medical Journal, the Commission has outlined a series of steps needed to be taken now in order to end the pandemic and prepare for future pandemics to come. These include significant boosts in healthcare access, education, research, and in supply chains. A new study has confirmed that despite some side effects, taking an aspirin every day has an overall positive effect on survival for people with cancer. The findings, reported in the journal Open Biology, are based on reviews of past research on aspirin, showing that it can reduce cancer-related inflammation, abnormal clotting, abnormal blood vessel growth, and enhance cellular repair processes. Additionally, scientists found an association between cancer and reductions in cancer-related deaths, as well as the spread and the vascular complications of cancer. They say that even though aspirin does cause a number of bleeds, the severity of these is low, suggesting that the drug could be used to benefit a wide range of cancers. Paleontologists have determined that fossilised teeth found in the 1970s were from a newly discovered species that is the last known giant panda to roam Europe. A report in the Journal of Vertebrate Paleontology claims that teeth found in northwestern Bulgaria belong to a close relative of the modern panda that roamed around that area six million years ago. The authors believe it was the same size or slightly smaller than today's pandas and ate a vegetarian diet likely made up of plants somewhat softer than bamboo. Apple has released their iOS 16 software update, which provides a range of new upgrades, including video, photo editing, and messaging tricks, as well as a revamp of Apple Maps and the biggest update ever to the facial recognition lock screen system. With the details, here's technology editor Alex saharov Royt from ity.com. The new iOS 16 for your iPhone, uh, tvOS 16 for Apple TV, watchOS 9 for Apple Watches, and macOS 12.6 have arrived today. Now, the new iPadOS 16 and the new macOS 13, uh, Ventura, are not due until October when Apple launches its new iPad Pros with the M2 chip and more M2 Max. But iOS 16 is here, and uh, I've been using it for the past uh, several weeks and uh, you obviously have that brand new lock screen that is there for iPhones uh, all the way back to the iPhone 8 and uh, that allows you to modify the lock screen, put on widgets. It's very cool. You have an always on display with the new iPhone 14 and 14 Pro as we discussed previously. Having the widgets on the front screen, it's very cool and there's features like being able to put your finger onto a uh, an image, uh, a person, a dog, whatever it might be in some of your photos and as you tap and hold the image, you see this little sheen go 
show over the image. And then you can, with another finger while you're tapping the image, you can swipe up, open up notes, messages, some other app and just drag and drop that image directly and it sort of cuts it out for you. You've got live activities and new places for notifications. You know, I mean, in one sense, it's a polishing of iOS 15, but there's stacks of different features. There's always features that don't quite make it into the first version, but things like editing a message and undoing a message, they're available. New pass key so that if you go into a particular website, they can send your phone a message and you can log in using your phone. You don't have to actually remember your password anymore. And even things like being able to get the live text out of video, something you can do now in photos, you could do that since iOS 15. But in iOS 16, you can, if you've got a good enough iPhone, you can pause the video and then copy and paste the text. And if you have an iPhone 13, you can actually hold your iPhone in any direction to unlock it with your face. You used to have to hold it vertically and it would look at your face and, and it would unlock, unlike on an iPad where you could hold it in any orientation. But now iPhone 13 and 13 Pro can do that as well, which is uh, long awaited. Also, the interface on the um, Apple Watch has been updated. I noticed that uh, when messages come through, they just pop at the top a little bit like they do on an iPhone doesn't take up the whole screen anymore. If you are going on exercises, I went for a walk the other day, my watch gave me a report afterwards telling me that I'm fit, telling me that I'm unfit uh, and my VO2 max levels were low. So it's much more of a health watch than before. And uh, things like tvOS 16, I haven't downloaded to my Apple TV as yet, but I have installed Mac OS 12.6 because it does fix certain bugs, but I'm looking forward to when Mac OS Ventura arrives in uh, October with the new stage manager. So uh, definitely it's time to update. And if you're somebody who likes to wait until 16.01 or even 16.1 or even 16.2. Uh, Apple did launch 15.7, iOS 15.7, and then that in fact is the version of iOS or iPad OS for iPads. iPad OS 15.7 is available today, but you don't have to go straight to 16. You might want to wait and see if there's any bugs that have been fixed. There's always little problems with apps here and there whenever you go to a new version, and Apple knows that not everybody wants to do that, and so they have made it possible for you to uh, update just to a newer version of iPad OS 15. 15 so you can get the security updates. And one other cool thing is that you can now dictate and use the keyboard together. Previously, when you spoke, you saw the waveform would appear on the screen. Now, the keyboard remains, and so you can speak, and a little icon is there showing you that you can still talk. You can actually go and edit things, but that's only for English. I tried it in French, and in French, the waveform was still there, but that's something Apple will roll out. Normally, they introduce features in some languages and then roll it out, but uh, always nice to see new features from Apple and whether, you know, new features from Android and Microsoft, but this week, it's uh, all about iPhones and Apple devices. And that's Alex saharov royt from ity.com. And that's the show for now. Space Time is available every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday through Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Spotify, Acast, Amazon Music, Bytes.com, SoundCloud, YouTube, your favorite podcast download provider, and from Spacetime with StuartGary.com. Space Time's also broadcast through the National Science Foundation on Science Zone Radio and on both iHeartRadio and TuneIn Radio. And you can help to support our show by visiting the Spacetime store for a range of promotional merchandising goodies. Or by becoming a Spacetime patron, which gives you access to triple episode commercial free versions of the show, as well as lots of bonus audio content which doesn't go to air, access to our exclusive Facebook group and other rewards. Just go to spacetimewithstuartgary.com for full details. And if you want more space time, please check out our blog where you'll find all the stuff we couldn't fit in the show, as well as heaps of images, news stories, loads of videos, and things on the web I find interesting or amusing. Just go to spacetimewithstuartgary.tumblr.com. That's all one word, and that's Tumblr without the E. You can also follow us through at Stuart Gary on Twitter, at Spacetime with Stuart Gary on Instagram through our Spacetime YouTube channel. And on Facebook, just go to facebook.com forward slash Spacetime with Stuart Gary. And Spacetime is brought to you in collaboration with Australian Sky and Telescope magazine, your window on the universe. You've been listening to Spacetime with Stuart Gary. This has been another quality podcast production from Bytes.com. We can stop HIV, Iowa, and it all starts with health equity. Health equity means that everyone has a fair and just opportunity to be healthy. To achieve this, we need to remove obstacles to good health. 
poverty, and discrimination support an environment in which HIV thrives. We must work together so that all Iowans have access to the resources they need to prevent, diagnose, and treat HIV. Visit StopHIVIowa.org. We can stop HIV, Iowa. One key step, getting tested for HIV. An estimated 14% of people in Iowa living with HIV don't know their status. The CDC recommends everyone get tested for HIV at least once in their lifetime or more often when needed. So testing is important. Yes! Testing is the only way to know your status. It's the first step in getting additional HIV prevention services or HIV care. Find out more at StopHIVIowa.org.